Hello, my name is Sam from the Hornby development team and I'm here in the Wonderworks next to our Hornby offices in Margate to show you for the first time the running samples of our LNER coronation coaches. Yeah, the LNER coronation coaches ran from London to Edinburgh in the 1930s. So what was great about this design process is although none of the coaches themselves exist, the, the coaches are lettered A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H and observation car, None of the lettered coaches survive, but two observation cars still survive. After they were used in the LNER, they then got moved to the Scottish Highlands, had the end chopped off, then rebuilt into a big boxy shape. But then one had the, that new end chopped off again and returned to the original shape, which lives in the one-to-one -one collection next to us in Margate. I started working on these coaches in January 2022. Uh, so a little while ago now, uh, but because there are essentially nine coaches and within those nine coaches there are four main periods of their service that when they were changed so in effect it's 32 coaches plus a couple of different observation car styles um, as well as that quantity there's also the articulating method uh, which we we had to design from scratch uh, because the bogey in between the two coaches is shared which in real life allowed for less resistance on the tracks so there were less wheels to, to cause friction so you may have seen on the Hornby Model World TV show when I was designing these that the articulated bogey method was quite complicated. I went through a couple of different versions before settling on the one that we've gone into production. Uh, and this works really well. It goes around the points on our track. It goes around as tight as radius two curves, which is impressive, I think, because it is something quite new. It's new and different for us. What's interesting about the LNER coronation is it streamlines. There's a valance that goes underneath the, the coach on the chassis and in between each coach there's a rubber fairing that goes in between attached to the ends of the coach so we've designed this onto our model obviously if you see the tv show you'll know this is where the issue of the design happened because in real life it was a, it was rubber and in real life the curves and the corners on real tracks aren't as tight as model railway tracks and so particularly for radius two you need to keep this this train looking as one sleek snake, in effect. But trying to achieve that whilst also going around corners was, was a challenge. Considering the limitations of model rail track, uh, I think I've achieved quite a nice effect with the articulated bogey and, and rubber fairing. So I started working on this project in January 2022. Um, we got lots of drawings from the National Archive. Um, because none of these coaches exist in real life, the drawings are really, really important. And there are also lots of good pictures, photographs, because at the time this was a groundbreaking thing. Back in the 30s, this is quite, quite a fun fact I like, the, a wind tunnel was used. It was one of the first uses of a wind tunnel to test the aerodynamics of the observation car, uh, because the observation car was designed to essentially reduce, the, the, whole, the whole train was designed to go from London to Edinburgh as fast as possible. So it's designed to reduce the air resistance. That's why it's got the fairings in between the coaches, why it's got the balances on the chassis. And the observation car was designed to mirror the, the A4, because it was pulled by the A4 locomotive, to mirror the A4, which is why you got that, so that's sweeping down. So in the winter time, the observation car wasn't fitted. It was only fitted in the summer because in the evenings, you can't see anything out the window. Um, and there was a real big toss up between the extra weight of the whole coach on the back versus the streamlining and aerodynamic effect it had. Uh, so that was something the engineers back in the 30s had to, had, had to weigh up. I've worked on a couple of coaches before, um, but this is certainly the most complicated set, being essentially nine coaches with a completely different style of really coupling, because there are two coaches, but they've got the share bogey. Uh, and that's where the real challenge of this project came in. At, at the start, and then when it came to the observation car, that was a lot of surface modeling, um, which is a bit more free form than, than what we'd normally do with a coach with sort of defined dimensions, which is really good for this. We have the one outside in the one-to-one -one collection that we could 3D scan and essentially trace around uh, what, what is 3D data. Currently, we've just received the first running samples. Um, at the shows back in the last year, we had a built-up sample that didn't run, as you might have seen that at Worley or Model Rail Scotland. Uh, but this is the first running sample that we've been able to put around our test track with working lights and all the extra functions that are in that I've designed in to make it a bit more exciting. There are a couple of different styles of coaches within the train. Uh, there's an open third, there's an open first, there's a kitchen third and a brake third. Uh, each of them have slightly different interiors and that's allowed for some interesting and 
different ways to model it that we haven't necessarily done before. Because it's an Art Deco style, if you look at pictures of the real thing, uh, each of the walls has is really nicely decorated with Art Deco styling and all these different colours and the seats are different patterns. Because you, when you look through the windows, we wanted people to see these walls. So each seat section with a wall is a separate part allowing us to print on both sides. So each coach is lit on the interior. Uh, so you'll be able to see this nice decoration. There's also luggage racks and in the kitchen car, you, there's a, the kitchen is detailed. You've got a, a tap in the sink that you, which you can see through the, the serving catch. So now that we've got our running sample, we're making sure it works around our test track and around here on at the Wonderworks layout. There's a couple of small tweaks that we need to make, um, but on the whole, it's looking very good. So now we're going to, once I've sent the report back, we're ex going to ex probably expect another set of running samples with the tweaks that we need to make before we get the decoration samples. Uh, that's when the product will really come to life because the, the two-tone blue and the, the hot foiled silver effect in real life, it's chrome. We're going to hot fall over the, all the ribs. Uh, that's when it will be brought to life. And behind an A4 uh, in the correct NER livery will look stunning. OK, so here we have coaches A and B with their bodies removed. Uh, a being the O, the brake third, and B being the kitchen. As you can see, the kitchen is, has a lovely detailed interior, uh, and the brake area is also represented. Each of the seat sections are separately fitted so that the walls can be painted in the Art Deco styling it would have had in real life. Here we have coaches C and D with their bodies removed. As you can see, similar to the previous coaches A and B, each of the wall sections are separate for decoration. Inside the toilets, you can see a PCB with a capacitor on feeding the LEDs for the roof lights. Now the capacitor is hidden in the toilet. The toilet windows are painted white, so that will not be visible when the coach is running. Here we have coaches E and F, the open third and kitchen coach. Um, the kitchen coach in this case is the same interior as coach B because there were two of them in the rake. One thing to note here is the kitchen interior does change throughout the life of the coach and we have taught this for future releases of the product. The changes with the interior are the toilet position moves, the guards compartment moves and the wall moves uh, with the extra seating. And finally we have coaches G and H the final brake third and open third of the coronation rake. One point to note here is in coach H, the brake wheel is missing from the assembly. This is just because this is a development prototype. And certainly not least, we have the interior for the observation car. As you can see, each of the armchairs is separately fitted and will be separately decorated as well as the sofa at the back there. An interesting point about this coach is the wall section inside the seating area is, in real life is beautifully decorated and that will be also represented in our model. So when you buy your twin set of coaches, uh, they will have a standard corridor connection end on. So you can run them just the two as you'd expect. However, when you couple those with another coronation set, uh, obviously in real life, it had the rubber fairing over the top. So to achieve this effect, the ends of the coaches are removable with magnets and replaceable with a rubber section, uh, which can be magnetized on. Obviously that's decorated. It follows the, the coloring of the coaches with the two-tone blue and uh, silver strip. So when you assemble two sets of twins together on the track, it looks like a continuous train without having the, uh, the standard corridor connection ending. In real life, this was the rubber fairing. Uh, so that's how we've we achieved this between each twin set. With these coaches, I've also designed them to be accurately spaced uh, between each twin set and each, uh, and each coach as well. Uh, so what this means is when you buy the coach, uh, it has a normal tension lock coupler on. That wouldn't be the correct space distance between the coaches. So if you remove that in the accessory bag, there are two different sorts of couplings you can use. There's a fixed bar coupler, uh, which brings them in nice and close. But there's also a magnetic coupler, which is easier to then uncouple the coaches. And those, the both the fixed bar and the magnetic coupler, bring the coaches into the correct coupling spacing, meaning that when it's in a straight line, the train looks like one continuous streamline rake. Thank you for watching me show our new LNAR Coronation Coaches running sample. In a few months time, we'll have the decorated samples to show. Uh, so keep an eye on the engine shed and the signal box for updates on the project.